Hi, thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for October 28th from Luke 10 and 11 of the World English Bible. Now after these things, the Lord also appointed 70 others and sent them two by two ahead of him into every city and place where he was about to come. Then he said to them, The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, nor wallet, nor sandals. Greet no one on the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking the things they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Don't go from house to house. Into whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat the things that are set before you. Heal the sick who are there, and tell them God's kingdom has come near to you. But into whatever city you enter, and they don't receive you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust from your city that clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that God's kingdom has come near to you. I tell you what will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in, that ju in the judgment than for you. You, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. Whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I saw Satan, having fallen like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will in any way hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. Excuse me. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for so it was well pleasing in your sight. Turning to the disciples, he said, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and he to whomever the Son desires to reveal him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see the things which you see and didn't see them, and to hear the things which you hear and didn't hear them. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And that's Deuteronomy 6 and Leviticus 19. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus answered, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he traveled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion, came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the host, and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will repay you when I return. Now, which of these three do you think seemed to be a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? He said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. As they went on their way, he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. She had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she came up to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to serve alone? Ask her therefore to help me. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. When he finished praying in a certain place, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. 
may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive also. Forgive, excuse me, forgive us our sins as we also. My mind keeps wanting to read it like the Our Father that I've memorized. So I've got to slow down a little. All right, so it says, verse four, forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He said to them, which of you, if you go to a friend at midnight and tell him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey, and I have not nothing to set before him. And he from within will answer and say, don't bother me. The door is not shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, although he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as many as he needs. I tell you, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, he won't give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He was casting out a demon, and it was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Others, testing him, sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say, for you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. But if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I by God's finger cast out demons, then God's kingdom has come to you. When the strong man, fully armed, guards his own dwelling, his goods are safe. But when someone stronger attacks him and overcomes him, he takes from him his whole armor in which he trusted and divides his plunder. He that is not with me is against me. He who doesn't gather with me scatters. The unclean spirit, when he has gone out of the man, passes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will turn back to my house from which I came out. When he returns, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. It came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. But he said, on the contrary, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. When the multitudes were gathered together to him, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks after a sign. No sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For even as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so the Son of Man will also be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in judgment, and the men of this generation will condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, one greater than Jonah is here. No one, when he has lit a lamp and puts it in the, no one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, see whether the light that is in you isn't darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly full of light, as when the lamp with its bright shining gives you light. Wow. Verse 37. Now, as he spoke, a certain Pharisee came, excuse me, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. He went in and sat at the table. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed himself before dinner. The Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup of, and the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. You foolish ones, didn't he who made the outside make the inside also? But give for gifts to the needy those things which are within, and behold, all things will be clean to you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue in every herb, but you bypass justice and God's love. You ought to have done these things, not to have left the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like hidden graves, and the men who walk over them don't know it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you insult us also. Okay, so 
I've read this a lot of times. What came to me just then is that there's two sides to this coin, right? Cleaning the outside and the inside. And they're criticizing Jesus for not doing the one side when they're not doing the other side of the coin, right? And Jesus said up here, you ought to have done these and not to have left the other undone. In other words, you're, you're focusing on one side and not the other, and the other is really more important. Um, so you're focused on this cleanliness, but not on, you know, you're focused on cleanliness on the outside, but not on the inside, which is more important. So it says, uh, the lawyer said, you insult us also. He said, woe to you lawyers also, for you load men with burdens that are difficult to carry, and you yourselves won't even lift one finger to help carry those burdens. Woe to you, for you built the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you testify and consent to the works of your fathers, for they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which is shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you took away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. As he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be terribly angry and to draw many things out of him, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. All right, that's the end. I thought there was more after that, but that's the end of chapter 10 and 11 of Luke, the book of Luke from the World English Bible. And that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.